we are going to be leaving the pre-built mats behind and we're going to go to the new heat membrane and cable system and really what we're looking at here is we're looking at that floor heating cable that is now going to be embedded or clicked into a grid system DIY or do it yourself. You are now in control of the design, the layout, the heat output, the performance, the feel, the comfort. It's all in your hands. Whereas we kept it in our hands with the pre-built mats. It is now in your hands. No reason to get scared because you will have the, the courage and the knowledge to be able to make a custom mat on the job site with this product right here. So the main advantage I would say when we're just talking new heat membrane versus any of the other systems is that because you're adding a substrate material to the job, it has other advantages to it. It actually can replace the need for concrete backer board. So in a lot of situations that the substrate is strong enough to handle a tile floor. So I can't be any more clear than that. Membrane does not add strength the same way another layer of plywood would add strength to a floor. Same way that concrete backer board does not add strength to a floor. So if that tile floor is ready to be set tile and it's plywood, then what you would do is you would have plywood, then you'd have the mem then you can replace the concrete backer board with the membrane. When it comes to membrane, there's lots of different variations as far as performance and how much load and distribution and pressure points you can put on that floor. Those are all marginalized or tested in one way, and that's called the Robinson test. In this particular membrane, it has received the extra heavy rating, which is technically just one click higher than residential. So this product that you're buying, it kind of still flows with that high quality, high, highly engineered uh, products that you get with Invent New Heat. With the membrane, it's in that same category where we're technically ramped it up a little bit to be in that light commercial zone, but it's being sold and installed in the residential market, meaning that your extra heavy rating is going to be more than enough to be able to handle the any floor situations that you can put it in when it comes to installing an uncoupling membrane. Okay, so and last, when it comes to membrane, we have different heat outputs. Like I said, you are in control of your cable spacing, meaning that your wattage output, you're now in control. You're not gonna tell us what to do. You have the ability to do 10 watts a square foot, 12 watts a square foot, or 15 watts a square foot. And all of those are gonna be different spaces in the membrane, and those all are gonna eat up a different amount of square footage. But those are the benefits of using a new heat cable system with a new heat membrane system. You have a ton of flexibility on that job site. You have a ton of wiggle room to make this system work and incorporate it to get that luxury and that quality feel for the homeowner and still be able to get the job done and get out of there and move on to your and move on to your next job. So go to the next slide. Here's a great image. One of my favorites. We're looking at spacing. Spacing, our 12 watts of square foot spacing is going to be what we call 232 spacing, which is in this image. And why we want to talk about that is because that's very important. You cannot change your spacing across your floor once you've started. So once you've chosen your spacing, you need to continue on with that spacing across that floor to guarantee that even heat distribution. So at 232 spacing, and as you can see here with this guy, we've got three pillars that were wrapped around, okay? And in this image, you can see that it goes three, then it goes two, then it goes three, then it goes two. That's called 323 or 232. I can argue with somebody all day long if they want to tell me that's any different than the other one. But just know that if it's 232 or 323, it really doesn't matter what we're doing is we're alternating three pillars, then two pillars, then three pillars, then two pillars. You do that all the way across your floor, you're going to get 12 watts a square foot, you're going to get 41 BTUs of heat output when you do that. Now, if you want 15 watts a square foot, then you're gonna go every two pillars. If you want 10 watts a square foot, then you're gonna go every third pillar. That spacing is not recommended in the Northeast or anywhere where it's cold. So 
I would stay away from 10 watts a square foot, but know that our national average here and what we've been growing and using for over 30 years is 12 watts a square foot, which you can get with new heat cable and membrane at 232 spacing. So moving on to the next slide, other benefits of uncoupling membrane. As you can see, it's an uncoupling membrane. This gray plastic, uh, some people would call it a mat, this gray plastic uncoupling membrane, okay? It's a membrane. It's gonna have vapor management. It's gonna have waterproofing. It's gonna have load distribution. Those are qualities that are gonna be built into this membrane that you're going to get alongside of also installing floor heating. So you guys get to have kind of two uh, two worlds in one because you're gonna put the floor heat into the membrane, but the membrane is also gonna be able to have that vapor management, or it's gonna have that waterproofing. You can take the pro band that we offer and, and go ahead and uh, waterproof the seams from one to the next, or do the corners or the perimeter all the way around that job in order to make sure that the floor is waterproof. In addition to, offering a floor heat system embedded into that uncoupling membrane. So these are the qualities of that. And as we go forward with what we're talking about is that this is just a little bit of a, of a showcase. Now, look, there is a little bit of crass, uh, crack isolation. If you have a problem with your concrete, you're not gonna fix it with anything over top. It's just, so let's, uh, my, my, and that's my recommendation with all floor heating material is that let's fix the subfloor issue first and then you can incorporate systems like this that can help you and absorb any unforeseen potential issues. But if you already have a potential issue where maybe your floor is sitting like this or you got a crack in your floor that's like that, let's address that first. Uncoupling membrane is not going to fix that. But know that we do have some properties that are embedded into this system that can help you uh, down the road. So right over top of what we're looking at here with our sandwich, we have our subfloor, we have our thin set that we're gonna thin set down the mat with, and then we're gonna string our cable and thin set and set tile, okay? And that's the basic sandwich of what you're looking at when it comes to new heat membrane. Moving on to the next slide is how do I source this membrane? The cable kits we'll get into, those are part numbers. But when it comes to this, you've got three different ways to get it. You can get a sheet, which is going to uh, ship or show up at the distribution flat. And that's going to be 40 inches by 40 inches in a square that you can buy in sheets. The other two options are going to be a large roll, which is 161 square feet, or a small roll, which is going to be 54 square feet. And those are the options when it comes to membrane. The highlighted yellow areas. The most important thing that goes back to what I was talking about, 323 spacing or 232 pillar spacing, yielding 12 watts a square foot. As you go down this chart, this is on the side of the cable box. It's also in our brochures. It's on all of our spec sheets. We have this information available to you to make sure that your job site goes smooth. The model number is on the left-hand side, the smallest one, N for new heat, one for 120 volts, C for cable, 008 for eight square feet if you string it 232 into the membrane. If you string it differently, so say that same kit is strung at two pillar spacing. So we're going to wrap every second, we're going to wrap the two pillar, two, 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 two. You're going to show up with six square foot of heat coverage with that same heated cable. This is the chart that's going to make your job awesome or frustrating because you didn't use it. So let's pick another square footage so we can actually get a feel for this. I'm just gonna throw something out there. 50 square foot heated area. I'm gonna go down this and I'm gonna look for 50. Well, the closest one I find is 48 square feet. That happens to be our N1C050. It's gonna cover 48 square feet when strung into that membrane, okay? That is the best way to use this chart. So when figuring out new heat, cable and membrane. The number one most important thing to do is to calculate your heated area. That's the number one area. So you wanna calculate how much heated area I need for that space, okay? Then you just subtract the vanity, subtract the toilet air, and you're gonna get the heated area of what you need. Then you're gonna select the cable spacing so that you can figure out what cable kit you're gonna buy to cover that square footage, 
Okay, and that's about as easy as it gets. It's not complicated. Once you do the first job, you realize eh, nothing to worry about. I got this thing licked and figured out. So moving forward, once again, this is now we're gonna start the story of how we're gonna build the sandwich of the new heat cable and new heat membrane. We're gonna thin set this thing down with modified thin set, just like we did the mat. The only thing that's gonna be different is that in the mat, it was a quarter by quarter square notch. In the membrane, we're gonna change that trowel to a quarter by three eighths, either square or U-notch trowel. We want a little bit more thin set to be put that membrane down with. So that's the number one difference here. So as we go to the next one, we'll see that we've got the story here of how we're gonna do this. So it's thin set, push the mat or push the membrane into that, string cable, flat side of the trowel, the membrane, and then immediately scrape lines and set tile on top of that. So let me take a little look at what we're looking at here. So we're going to remove the standard mat from this job site install. Okay. And we are going to bring up a cable install. And this is what we're looking at here is you have a membrane that has new heat cable inside of it. Okay. So this is the new heat cable. It's very easy and straightforward to be able to push this heating cable into the membrane and then figure out what spacing you're going to do. Okay. What some things now, obviously this is three, two, three, two, three yields 12 watts a square foot. What I don't want to see happening is that I don't want to see cable crossing each other. That's a big no. That's going to hurt a lot and it's not a good idea to do. So definitely do not cross over heating cables. And then once again, the most important thing is to calculate your heated area and then figure out what spacing you want to do because that'll tell you how much square footage that's going to be able to cover. So if we were to change this grid, you know, and then do that, we could string this so that it would be, you know, looping around two. Now, if you have to finish a job like this, and I understand the cables, they don't get longer and they don't get shorter. So you do need to figure out how to finish off that cable. What I recommend with a cable cable is you're always going to start at the power location, which once again, the power location is over there. You're going to start there and then you're going to come out here and start making your grids back and forth. So where I recommend you finish would be behind the tank of the toilet where you have not calculated to have heated area. Maybe finish at the, uh, the closet where you also have not calculated floor heating so that you can finish in there. And then behind the tank of the toilet, if you were to do three, two, three, two, three, and then two, two, two behind the tank of the toilet, well, yes, it's gonna be warmer there, but the homeowner is probably not gonna step back there. So it's not gonna make that much of a difference. I only recommend that if you have too much cable and you need to hide it somewhere, then you can go tighter spacing where the homeowner is not going to step. Wherever the homeowner is stepping, standing, sitting, or enjoying their floor, you wanna make sure that you pick this, this spacing that's gonna cover that heated area and then keep that spacing consistent all the way across that floor, okay? So this slide, it's very important, is that when you have two pieces of membrane, so when I show here, I've got two pieces of membrane, okay? One's got a jagged edge, other one not so much. So pretend one's one roll and the other's another roll and we wanna match them together. Well, the only way that this job is gonna be fun to install cable into is if you've left or you've matched up those pillars. If these pillars are not matched up, then you have no way of getting the heating cable across that seam. Frustrating day. So to keep that frustration down, the best way when you're installing the membrane is to make sure that your panels are all lined up and all of your pillars are lined up so that you can have a spot to be able to run that heating cable all the way across that seam and keep going into the next zone or next area you're gonna be putting heat. All right, moving on. We have what a normal install would be over plywood. And like I had said before, there's lots of different variations out there in North America. If your plywood subfloor is acceptable for tile, then you can go ahead and thin set the new heat membrane down, install the cable, and then thin set and set tile on top of that. A lot of contractors are gonna wanna thin set this membrane down, let that dry, 
then string the cable into that. Then they're gonna come in and do thin set to fill in that honeycomb, then scrape your lines with the same wet thin set at the exact same time in thin set and set tile. That's typically the best way to yield the best results. And that's probably, that's what I would recommend. And as you can see here, this is another substrate sandwich that is gonna be over concrete. And you would thin set this mat down right to a concrete that's been approved for a tile install. And then the mat, thin set and set tile. Okay, very straightforward product, high quality. You get a ton of flexibility on the job site to be able to manipulate and get the best results. After the first couple jobs, you will be good enough that you can make your own custom mat on a job site with the new heat cable and the new heat member. If you have a question, please reach out to our team and we'll walk you through the best do's and don'ts of installing that new heat membrane system.